Okay, my friends, I just put up a video and I just took it down because it was kind of rude. I was a little hostile, and I, I am hostile, but let's tr I'm going to try to be as nice as I can be. Now, there was an article somebody sent to me about how they figured out how fossils preserve, and they call them instant flash fossils, something like that. And it was uh, written by this guy, David Martill. Uh, and he mentioned uh, Derek Briggs in there. And um, his interest here is the preservation of soft tissue fossils, the mechanism that happens, so forth. And, um, and he claims to be quite interested in that, as does Derek Briggs. Now, Derek Briggs refused to engage with me for years now. I've, and after doing all of the things that I thought they were going to, uh, well, that they actually said I had to do, and I did them all, and they still refused to engage. And I got a feeling I understand why, because I have giant human beings. I've found the things that were written about in the ancient texts, including the Bible. And that's a very difficult road to be on for these people. Okay, I, I do feel a bit hostile, but in the interest of not being uh, too um, nasty, I'm just going to present the facts. This was a DNA test I had done five years ago. It took several months to do. There was three specimens. One was a gigantic fingertip. One was a semi-large fingertip. Well, actually huge. <laughs> and one was a lung. And they were done with bacterial DNA extracts. And everything was done to just the absolute best way it could be done. All kind of temperatures recorded and times and solutions and all this stuff. And it ended up being that there was dense DNA because I harvested it from the arterial blood supplies and they were both maternal DNA which is called that mitochondrial DNA was the same as humans today. Now that's all I can tell you and and it, it, there was no chance that this was wrong. There was no chance this was contamination. This was not like taking a swab off the surface. And, you know, there's blood in these things. There's literal blood coming out of these rocks. When they say you can't get blood out of a rock, they're out of their minds. Okay, I've sent this to really all the universities, and uh, Derek Briggs, who I'm talking about, has dismissed it. But anyway, this is the fingernail pads underneath. That's the same as your, uh, I'm sorry, your fingerprints. And these are the little sweat glands, and those are the fingerprints. I think that's going to be pretty evident. And then I broke off where it goes around the side. I smashed it off. This is the bone. This is where the blood supply comes in. And um, I show other fingertips that show that's where the blood comes in. And uh, this is the fingernail. And that was the uh, fingerprints. And they are dense with silicon. I understand the silicon. Let me show you another hand that I found. Now, this is, the, well, you can see, this is. 12, 24, it's almost 30 inches wide, this fingertip. Now, let me show you a lung that I also had oh, DNA certified right here. This is the lung. Right. Now, this, this is what they call feldspar. Well, it's not feldspar. Virtually everything has the same, even like this goose. That's a goose's head. You see the pattern of the feathers in the top? You see that? That's a goose's head. And you look at that in the microscope, which we should in a minute. And I will show you, it's almost the same as this. Pleura is very dense. But it's also the same as this, which is periosteum, which is on the outside of bones. It's a wrapping. The ancients used to call it tunica. You see that little seam right there? It wraps right around like a crescent roll. <laughs> I, I, I thought they were seen together. I thought they were stitched. Some of the first ones I found, I said, holy smokes. And that's the uh, ferritin, which is the black, um, um, you know, it's inside the uh, marrow area. There's a last bit of bone that's left on there. This is what happens to them. I know this extremely well, and they decay in a whole batch of different ways. Sometimes the lungs will bleed right out, and you'll end up with a lung that has no real, you know, um, gooeyness left in there. All of this stuff has bled out, all the blood, and well, pretty much. You can see this, it's all very red still in there. So there's still a lot of iron left from the blood. That's obvious in the lung. Now, 
Uh, let me show you the hand and the silicon from the hand because and here's the thing. Oh, give me a second. Give me a second. Here it is. I don't even know how I might have showed you this. This this is a finger from the big um well not from the big hand. This is the biggest one. That this thing here is tiny compared to that one. But this is the hook where tendons hook in. And they do all that sort of stuff. We have new species too called notos. And we have a ton of these. And they're all kinds of different ones. They have springs inside of them. We have them in all kinds of different layers of deterioration. Alright, this is a left human hand. That's the pad and this sort of um, rubbery stuff that you have around the edge of the palm of your hand. And then if you lay it back, you'll see you have one of these little strips that goes down the tendon. Now, this silvery part, you see it here? That, all that silvery stuff is silicon skin. It's very dense in um, silicon because it's your grip skin. And it's the same stuff that I, I think I already showed you this, that's on here. Okay, now, this is eroded down to the silicon area, where the top stuff has eroded off. And this one here is virtually like it never eroded at all. Now, um, I'm pretty intimate with this stuff now. This is three feet wide. And I have the knuckles, I have fingers, I have all kinds of stuff, I have toes. You know, and they were like 60 feet down the other back of the yard. So, this is stuff, it's not tiny, it's right on the surface. The stuff I'm finding, I believe, is from the Great Flood. You see that? This was DNA certified human. You see how flat that is? This, I think, these guys died in the Great Flood. And because of the pH of the flood, was apparently it must have been like 7.2, 7.3 pH, the molecules in these in these biological things became stable because they were in an aqueous solution with approximately the same pH as your body has and because of that they will find molecules that will be the most comfortable with them and then they will attach and then they will become pretty much stable. If they dry out, they stay in this condition just like this. Even an opal heart. Where do you see what happens in an opal heart? And the reason is, is because opals are formed in transition metals. They can go either way and they're in some chemistry that is likely near salts or acids. And that helps to facilitate the exchange of molecules to turn into these different colors. All right, I'm going to show you an opalized heart. And opals are nothing more than something that formed, biological stuff, that formed in these transition metals with some kind of other chemistry, whether it's acids or salts, I'm not sure. And then they turn into all these colors because they're attaching these molecules to other biological things to stabilize, as I will show you now. Okay, I love chemistry. I understand chemistry. I understand how molecules form and stabilize. These are different, like this ventricle walls, and then this is the blood, literally the blood. These different colors that are inside the little blood spots, that are the transition metals. Transition metals roam through your body, attaching to molecules with one little electron, with what they call a ligand and it carries it to somewhere and it drops it off somewhere else in your heart, in your lungs, in your feet, in your toes, in your eyeballs, in your ears. It carries things through your blood. Then these regions that have specific chemistry, and every, you know, every one does, will attach to molecules that will make it most stable. If it is left in the correct conditions, which is a salty sort of, uh, I'm not sure what the condition, i got to be honest with you, the opal sort of, I really haven't been able to th look into them that close. But I do know that they, these molecules are becoming stabilized with a specific other piece of chemistry. How it got there, in what conditions, whether it's the salts or acids, the kidney, it was near the kidney or near the bile or near the liver or near whatever it was. 
it has to be aqueous. We know that. There's no question about that. The water, you know, aqueous means it's real fluidy, a lot of fluids, a lot of fluids moving all the time. And then having the correct chemistry in there moving through this, which is, these are all blood, this is all blood. This is all from blood, transition metals, all blood. Now, that means that these transition metals, which is in your bloodstream, are moving through here, through here, through here, through here, through here, in this, like, containment, uh, and it looks like a lot of clear aqueous solution along with the blood molecules. Eventually, they find transition metals, and they it's called nucleophilic invasion, and there's other different terms, but nucleophilic invasion pr pretty much means whatever this was is going to be replaced by a more stable molecule. Now, whether, I don't really know the exact details of this, I have my suspicions why it replaces, and it might be because it sends it out from the cell walls where they begin to crystallize, and then what happens is when you grow crystals, they just keep growing the crystals until they hit another cell wall on the other side. So, um, I, I, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot, a lot, a lot. I have so much stuff from so many people around the world now that have been denied, just like Derek Briggs denied my stuff. Now, this is from Gary Evans. He found this rock. He sends, sends me this information. He says, guess what happened when I broke it open? Boom. It was a lung. <laughs> now, this, that was in a mud flat. Here's the deal. It has nothing to do with the stuff that Derek Briggs is talking about. What happens is in salt wet conditions, the body is, is normally in 7.3 ish pH. That's what you live in. That's what the tissues survive in. Now, if you are completely encased, your body, when you die, in mud, so there is no anaerobic reaction, there's no oxygen coming in, because oxygen is the thing that really does the work. Once you completely surround that in the fine platypolar silicates, which is mud, at this specific salt water um, condition, which is basically what you live in, your body doesn't even know it's dead. <laughs> that thing could have been around here for 2,000 years. And probably has been, or maybe 3,000. I'm not sure how long ago the Great Flood was. But all of these things pretty much were products of the Great Flood. And they hardened up in a lot of cases after they dried out, after being basically preserved in the salt water conditions. And then they come out perfect, like these bones. Like that, that's a bone. It has all the cartilage. It's got the, uh, I believe they call that the periosteum. You see this, this little flap looking thing there? It wraps right around like a fabric. The, the, the Greeks used to call it tunica. Inside here, this is called um, ferritins, the black stuff. You see, that's the last bit of bone that's left. It will transition. They continuously transition. But once they stabilize due to the salts, and that's another thing that you have to learn, Professor, is some chemistry and how you have different sides of the periodic chart and your transition metals are in the middle. Now, in the chemistry of your body, you have bleed off of... Um, salts and acids and bile and urine and feces and all kinds of enzymes and those make all kinds of different products which create different end results. This is a toe. See that? That's a toe. That's a toe and that's the blood running out of that toe. That's the back. There's a red and a black here. Now, when you hydrate this, I'm going to put a little water on. It's called hydration. Maybe you probably I mean, maybe you understood that. Maybe you've heard of hydration. Now, <clears throat> this is um, the toe. And that is the red side of the blood. That's the black side of the blood. That's the actual toe. Now, metals bleed out. And it, it, actually, uh, this is the actual callus on the guy's toe. I have another one over here. Wait a see this one. Look at this one. They come in different looking st structures, too. This is the toe. That's the guy's callus. See that? That's a callus. 
I have other ones, gigantic ones, and the toes, I, I have one over here that the callus is so enormous, it's unbelievable, and it capped off the vein, the artery side, so the, the big one blew out the black side, which is almost unheard of, and it's so obvious, you can see it, and of course we have new species, that I think somebody should be interested in new species called no-toes. You should see the one Tish Eager has. She has a site that has bazillions of them. I think this is per merits a little investigation from Yale and Harvard and, and all the people that we rely on to give us the information that we can consider as valid and true. Now, if you see that as happening, I don't know where your eyes are. I don't see it. Not from one single university that I tried to work with, not a single one. So, if I think things got to be very, 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 very seriously looked into because we need to be told truth. Not happening now. All right, this is from a discovery that Tish Egerton found, and I can help you up with her if somebody would like to investigate her site. We have sites now all over the, all over the world, really. All right, here's some more of Tish's. I have the same thing. I have a similar one. She has them in more of a state of, um, mine are like perfect. They're completely, so oh, my site, everything looks almost like it's never eroded at all. Everything is complete and perfect. Now, in her site, they're, um, they're pretty well eroded. See, like that, that's one of these feet and it's eroded. Now you see back here? That's the bone ball in the back. It's that bone ball right there. You see that strap coming up? That's that strap right there. You see this right up here? That saddle is where the bone sits right here. And that strap goes runs right up to it. Same as ours, basically. Uh, except now we have tendons here instead of these springs. And I looked at these springs and they're literally constructed. There is a lot to think about here. And to just dismiss all this for... Um, because you, you, you think you're going to look foolish, makes you look foolish. Okay, now don't forget now, I have contacted literally every university, all the top ones, and um, they have just ignored everything, regardless of the DNA test, the CAT scans, the specimens, the anatomists. I verified the process. I've recreated mud fossils myself. Now, it's now it has become an, in, in the general population. They're understanding it, and they are going to be going against academia very soon. And all they ever had to do was say, wow, nobody expected this, and look into it. And they didn't do it, and now they're being disgraced. Now, this is from my one I put up just, oh, I don't know, yesterday or the day before. Giants are the earth. Now, I'm going to play this so you can see that giants are the earth, Professor Briggs. And you have missed everything, my friend. And for that, we have had to wait. And, and all the students you have been teaching for the last few years, I, they, I, I, they're going to be kind of upset. So we have absolutely won, but I would love to see everybody else be able to, to speak about this in the realm of reality. Well, wait a second. What was I saying there? We, we won? Let me think about that. Tyson has. It, it, I mean, seriously, it's time to f step up because their silence is an absolute omission of their wrong. Now, so we have absolutely won, but I would love to see everybody else be able to to speak about this in the realm of reality. But as far as academia, they're, 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 their silence is an admission of guilt. Case closed. All right, you saw that stuff on this state park. What you're looking at here is a bilipid layer. That means there's a layer here of tissue and then a layer down here, and between it is this aqueous, gooey stuff where the molecules transfer back and forth through to tissues on this side and tissues on this side. These are the holes that the molecules transfer through. This is a membrane, and I'm not sure what kind of membrane it is, but I'm going to just play this for a second, you'll see. Now, for anybody to dismiss this and say that, oh, that's just lava, it's insanity. Look at this. These are, and, and Tyson and I have done the biological research on this. No question whatsoever what it is. And the the academic response... You hear somebody saying, oh, they're just lava. Tyson says, that's not lava. 
is like is lava. That's what they tell her, it's just lava, and then they walk away. This is... There's Lucy. <laughs> this whole pattern runs up underneath there. There's all biological causes. 100% bi I mean, how could you miss this? Now, the only way to, to miss this is to either be so incompetent that biology has no place in your life, and you never want to open a book that, that refers to actual pictures of biology, or you just want to dismiss it because it interferes with your life. That's what the problem. Hey, all right, now, and in us, watch this. Well, I'll show you. This is another one somewhere else. They're, they're all over. The, I'm the you, Earth. Like this is just the Earth is 100% biology. All right, this so is, is the everything. bilipid membrane. You saw those holes going through all of the different little bumps and patterns. I'm not going to bother showing you all I, that. I, I've shown that, so, and you could come up and watch this video. It's called Giants Are the Earth. And then I'm going to come out here where I confronted the people about Crowley Lake and that they're, they're talking about this was all from volcanism. Can you imagine? Absolutely unbelievable who are teaching our kids and, and, and taking the money for doing this. It's all Vulcan, volcanism, they say. Now, here's a real issue. Watch this. This is where we got an issue here. Atlantis, Atlas Mountains. Oh, they could dismiss oh, that forever. I have no clue. All right, and this is enormous. It is 900 miles long. That is the dragon's face. That's that little funny nose that they have. This is the little fluty stuff that goes down in the dragon's body. And you can follow his body right here. And this is it runs throat. almost it all the way back. over to the Mediterranean. I gotta tell you something, my friends. I am gonna have a blast with this now because this is so obvious how much. All right, I was just gloating at that point, <laughs> but it is. It's so unbelievably obvious that that they are just they can't handle the truth. You can't handle the truth. And then you come out to like Crowley Lake here, where these are hairs. They are from hair. Crowley Lake is nothing but hair, skin and hair. Right? They're all hairs. They can say anything they want, but I'm going to tell you right now, that's black and red as a vein and, and artery blood. And those are hairs, and that's the variegation of the hairs, and this is kale and clay, which is skin. And I, I go on and show all this, and then you come down to the sweat glands, and that's another hair. That's an artery and vein. This is tissue. These are the um, you know what the hair looks like. These are sweat glands. You know, those are the sweat glands like that. And uh, the earth is made of giant creatures. So the, the case is closed on that. Now, what, the case is wide open on academia right now. How are they going to handle this? Now, I would not want to be in their position. They have missed the boat, and and I'm very, very happy that they did because that gave me the opportunity to pursue this correctly because it, I guarantee you, if I'd have left it in the arms of Yale and the rest of them, you, 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 it would just be ridiculous because that's, they, that, that's nothing but nonsense from these people, absolute nonsense. And if you want to follow them and pay them for their nonsense, I just can't imagine it. I can't imagine how people are going to feel when they see this video. I can't. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, just, all this stuff is in my past. But a lot of people have it right in the midst of their life right now and their future. So things got to absolutely change instantly. And people got to be, you know, talking about reality. I'm not doing this to be nasty to anybody. I'm doing this to find out reality. And when you see the dragon and the fish in Morocco, that's just freaking mind blowing. And then it's on Mars too. And and I've sent the stuff to Mar to uh, NASA and everybody. They won't engage because they, they and they're just walking around in circles. They might as well just whistle in the woods and put blinders on. 
And the same thing with Yale and all the rest of them. They could, they, they, there's not a single possibility of them finding reality until they look at what I am presenting. And if they can come up with a reasonable objection to what I have presented to say, no, this isn't right because of this, this, and this, let's talk. But that's just not happening because they know they cannot handle the truth. Now, don't forget, this is science news for students. These are teachers. These are the professors charging excessive amounts of money to produce what is considered by the students verified information and that they they look into everything that's presented to them, and I don't think that's true at all. I presented DNA evidence, CAT scans, well, they wouldn't look at them, at Yale and Harvard and every other one of their universities. So I don't see that as being fiduciary, um, as, as fulfilling their fiduciary obligations whatsoever. It, fiduciary obligation means that they have to work in the best interest of the students instead of saying, oh, I discovered this, I discovered that, which is, is meaningless now because it's not true. And they know it's not true, or they should know it's not true, if they were doing their fiduciary obligation, which is a legal obligation. So um, I would confront my professor if I had paid him and say, why didn't you look at this? Derek Briggs, why didn't you talk to Roger? Why wouldn't you discuss it? Why wouldn't you think that the DNA and the CAT scans and the specimens and all of that stuff was worthy of looking at. You looked at this fish. I, as I, was, I feel a little upset about this. I, absolutely. I've done a lot of work. I've done, we've done a lot of, um, spent a lot of money and figured that people wanted truth and it's just rejected. And uh, I see that as a, bit of a serious issue and a serious problem for the people who have done this. Whether they think they can just do that and, and continue to take people's money for education and, and, and just disregard any reality, that is a very distressing situation. And I think somebody has to address it.